Lesson 17.3, Task 3. Solve quadratic equations by factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. Alright, so this time we're going to factor when c is less than 0. So that means when we have our quadratic equation in standard form, the constant term will be less than 0, which means it will be negative. So here's an example. To factor an expression such as 2x squared minus 7x minus 15, where c is less than 0, again, c is the end number here, so that's the negative 15, you can make a table that is similar to the spreadsheet you created in task 2. Alright, so here's all the factors of a, here's all the factors of c, and then the outer and inner products. If you remember, they used m and n's and p's and q's in the previous task, but now they're just saying a, c, and your inner product. So this is basically your first number here, 2, all the numbers that multiply to give you 2. Here's your c, which is negative 15. These are all the factors or all the numbers that multiply to give you negative 15. And then these are all the numbers that you get for your middle term. So all the numbers that we add up to get negative 7. Negative 7 is what we want. So if you look at the order of the numbers, it does matter what the order is. So the only one of these combinations that will work would be this one right here, the one next to the bottom. So 1 and 2, negative 5 and 3, when you multiply those in that order, you get negative 7. All right, so that's going to be our factors of 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. And I'm going to factor that the way I do it a little bit differently just because I don't make such a large table. My table is just a little smaller, but it's the same concept. All right, so the factors of C must be different because to multiply to get a negative, you have to have different signs. So signs because their product is negative. Alright, so it says explain why the factors of a in the table are the same while the factors of c are different. So the factors of a are 1 and 2 because the only factors that multiply to give you 2 is 1 and 2. So you're going to have to use those same ones each time. Now to multiply to get negative 15, you got 1 and 15, 3 and 5, and they have those in different orders as well with the signs being different. Here you can see these numbers have negative, and down here that those numbers are positive with negatives on the other side. So again, the order of which the positive and negative does make sense, or does matter, because you can see the same combination of numbers are in two different places, but you get a positive 7 and a negative 7. So that's why the sign absolutely does matter. Alright, so it says what is the factored form of? From the table above, we can see that it's going to be 1, negative 5, and 2, and 3. So 1, negative 5, and 2, and 3 would be the other one. Now, before I check that, I'm going to show you the way that I do it, which again is the same thing. It's just a little bit, I think, shorter process. So we've got 2x squared minus 7x minus 15, and we want to factor that, so we know we're going to factor it into two binomials. So I need to know what multiplies a and c. So multiply a and c gives me negative 30, and then it needs to add to equal b. b is negative 7. So this just helps me make a smaller table, so I can look at just the factors of a and c together instead of separately. And um, when I do that, I can also see that I need negative 7. So to have negative 30, I'm going to need a plus and a minus. But right now, I'm just going to look at my different factors. So 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 4 doesn't go into it, 5 and 6, and that would be, um, that would be it. 
All right, so in order to do that, I need to say to get 7, I'm going to have 3 and 10. Now, what makes it negative? All right, to get negative 7, the bigger number has to be negative, and this number has to be positive. All right, so I went ahead and wrote parentheses, but remember the first step, we are going to put it in parentheses, but we're going to rewrite the middle term as two terms. So we're going to have 2x squared, and we're going to rewrite negative 7x as negative 10x, and then plus 3x minus 15. Now notice both of those have to have an x because to get negative 7x, you have to combine like terms in order to do that. So again, we just rewrote this as these two terms. And now because we have four terms, we can group it and factor out our GCF of each. So I'm going to pull out 2x. And if I factor 2x out of 2x squared, I'm left with an x. 2x out of negative 10x is negative 5. And then on the second binomial, I'm going to factor out a 3. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. All right, now I can see that my greatest common factor, x minus 5. And I'm left with 2x plus 3. So you can see that x minus 5, 2x plus 3. I got the exact same answer. I just didn't make that big elaborate table that they did up top. So what I'm doing is multiplying A times C, adding to get B. All right, they're doing the exact same thing. They're just making this table here to look at every single combination possible. Okay, I'll eliminate that a little bit by doing A times C, and I only have to look at these combinations and then figure out which sign goes with which number. Same result, a little bit different. You can use either method you want. All right, that's all for task three. Lesson 17.3, task four. Solve quadratic equations by factoring. You can solve some equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero by factoring and then applying the zero product property. The cross section of a portable speaker is designed to have a parabolic shape defined by the equation y equals negative 2x squared plus 7x, where x is the horizontal distance in inches along the front of the speaker, and y is the vertical distance in inches of the parabolic casing from the front of the speaker. The, design, the designer needs to attach bolts to the casing where the casing is 6 inches from the front of the speaker. All right. So you can see when the speaker is opened up, you can see that um, parabola shape there, which they are showing here on the graph. So it says determine the distance x at which the casing is 6 inches from the front of the speaker. All right, so here's the equation that we were given. All right, so we were given negative 2x squared plus 7x, and we want that to equal 6 inches um, from the front. All right, so this is a quadratic equation. So the first thing we need to do is set it equal to zero. So to do that, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And then in order to factor, we don't start with a leading coefficient of negative. So we need a positive number here. So we're going to divide or multiply the whole equation by negative 1. And when I do that, you can see that every sign changes. So negative becomes positive, positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, and zero is just zero. It's not positive or negative. So basically when you have negative 2x squared plus 7x minus 6 equals zero, you're going to multiply by negative 1, multiply by negative 1. When you multiply it becomes positive, negative 1 times that becomes negative, negative times a negative is positive, and again, zero times anything is just zero. It's not positive or negative. So that's where this step right here comes from. All right, why do we do that? Again, we want a positive leading number so that we can factor, okay? We don't factor when the first number is negative. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying we don't, we try not to do it. It's just not good practice. 
All right, so to factor this expression into this, um, you can make the table of values like before, but you can always check to make sure it's correct. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x plus negative 3x. Negative 4 plus negative 3 gives you negative 7. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives you 6. So you can very quickly see that the factored form is equivalent to the standard form. It's just written in two different ways. All right, so it says complete the statement. To write the equation in standard form, you had to subtract, so we had to subtract 6 from both sides. And then what operation is performed to rewrite this? So we factored it. And then it says, what is the property that justifies writing the factors equal to zero? So that's your zero product property. That's something that you will see from here on out. When you have a product of two things set equal to zero, you can set each one equal to zero and then solve. All right, so it says, explain how you can be sure the quadratic equation factored correctly. Okay, so I already checked it up here. Remember, um, I just out loud, I multiplied this using distributive property and I did double check it. So I have already checked it to make sure it worked by seeing it when I multiplied it to make sure it was the same as what we started with. So that's always the way you would want to check it. All right, so it says, explain how you can be sure the quadratic expression is factored correctly. That's what we just did. All right, one thing I did um, kind of skip over here. Once they used um, this, they did use the zero product property, and they went ahead and they have used that to find the solutions here. So we can go down here, and I don't know why they showed that up there, but if we have the zero product property, we have 2x minus 3, and we have x minus 2, and if that's equal to zero, we can set each one equal to zero and solve. And that's how we find our zeros. And our zeros, remember, are the x-intercept, and the x-intercepts are our solutions. So 2x equals 3, divide both sides by 2. 3 halves is the same as 1 and a half, or 1.5. All right, for this one, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Again, I'm just trying to get x by itself. So my two solutions, my two zeros, are 1.5 and 2. So it says the casing reaches a distance of 6 inches from the front of the speaker when x is 1.5 inches and when x is 2 inches. Alright, that is all for task 4. If you have any questions, let me know.